Hello and welcome to another set of examples for chapter 2, Predicate Logic, CSC 259. In this, we will look at the rules of uh, natural deduction for predicate logic. We had rules of natural deduction for propositional logic for the conjunction disjunction implication. Those will be required for this uh, chapter 2. Uh, in addition, we have a few more rules uh, based on the quantifiers. So let's have a quick recap of the uh, rules for quantifiers. So the first set of rules is equivalence. Uh, so if t two terms t1 and is equivalent to t2 and we have a formula in which t1 replaces a variable x, then we can replace t1, we can use t2 instead of t1. So that's the elimination rule of equality and uh, the inference or the introduction rule of equality says uh, uh, given uh, we can always consider terms of equivalence that is something of the type you know x plus y is equal to y plus x so uh, given x and y are integers or or real numbers if this holds then we can use y plus x in place of x plus y. Uh, this is the uh, introduction of equality. Now coming to the universal quantifiers. So if we are given for all x of a formula, then we can take a term t which can replace x. So that uh, is the elimination rule of universal quantifier. And the introduction rule of in universal quantifier is given an x naught uh, and we can conclude the formula phi of x naught replacing a variable x then we can say for all x phi now this is a bit confusing because of uh, we are considering one variable x naught so the important thing is x naught should uh, should not have occurred anywhere else outside this box uh, in such a case this holds so you are taking it's it's like you have a set and you're picking up uh, any random uh, value from that set and we can prove that uh, phi holds. That's the type of uh, introductory rule for uh, their uh, universal quantifiers for all x. Now when it comes to existential quantifiers, so if you are given there exists x of phi, that means there is some value of x for which phi holds then taking that value of x naught, if we can conclude uh, a formula uh, which is independent of the value x. Uh, so if we can conclude something like chi, which is independent of x, then we can say chi holds. So this is the elimination rule of uh, the existential quantifier. And for the introductory rule, so if there is a term which is independent of x for which phi holds, then we can say there exists uh, x uh, for phi that is there is a value for which phi holds and so that is there exists x phi is true. So these are the rules of natural deduction. Again remember that in addition to this we have the rules uh, for or or and and uh, uh, implication uh, which are required for from chapter one uh, for doing uh, natural deduction. So let's now look at a few examples of uh, natural deduction. So now let's see this example for all x, p of x or q of x, if this is valid, then prove uh, for all x, p of x is valid and for all x, q of x is valid. So how do we go about doing this? So the first step is what's our premise? So for all x, p of x and q of x, this is our premise. Now, given for all of x, we will go about doing this and recollect the uh, formulas of universal quantifier. So we can say, if you consider an x naught, some constant x naught, with, then we can say x naught or q of x naught. This is the for all x elimination rule from step one. Now from this, 
we can say p of x naught this is and elimination rule 1 uh, of conjunction from step 3. Now given this we can conclude for all x p of x this is for all x introductory rule and we are using the steps 2 dash 4. Now just like the same way again considering an x naught we can write the same p of x naught and q of x naught. So this is for all x elimination uh, rule from 1 then we can say q of x naught and this is e2 conjunction rule elimination rule 2 from step 7. For all x q of x and this is introductory rule from step 6 to 8. Now continuing here from step 5 and 9 we can write for all x p of x and for all x q of x using the introductory rule of 5 comma 9. So I've done the deduction of for all x p of x for all x q of x given for all x p of x and q of x. So this is the way you would do about go about it. One important part which you have to see here is the same set of steps are repeating twice. Why we are doing this is because we are considering a random x naught in the case of for all of x. Let's see another example. In this case, we are given p of a x comma for all x for all y for all z p of x y z implies p of f of x uh, y comma f of z then we can say I think this should be a p here p of uh, f of a comma a comma f of a so if we have to prove this uh, we are given some premise so the first step is what's our premise p of a comma x comma x so this is a premise the second step is another premise p of x comma y comma z goes to p of f of x comma y comma f of z this is premise now uh, we can use the elimination rule of for all so we get uh, from step one we get p of a comma a comma a uh, we are using for all x elimination from one uh, so basically we are replacing x by a now for the second term we can use the same rule and this will lead to f of a comma y comma f of z. So in this we are replacing for all x elimination rule uh, from from step two. Note that we have done replacement only for x over here. So similarly we need to do it for y. So replacing uh, a for y we get this and here it is the elimination rule from step 4. Note that we are not using step 2 here but step 4. In the last we replacing for z we get p of a comma a comma a implies p of f of a comma a comma f of a and again this is the elimination rule 
for z sorry uh, please note the correction on the top it's not x it's y and here it is for all z elimination rule for step 5 now using step 3 and step 5 we get our conclusion p of f of a comma a comma f of a uh, this is the elimination rule of implication uh, from using 6 and 3 so the elimination rule of uh, uh, implication is given phi and phi implies psi. You can conclude psi. Uh, so this is the elimination rule of implication. This is the rule we have used in step number seven. So these are the ways you go about using for all and there exists universal and existential quantifiers uh, to this. Uh, for more uh, information, look at the examples provided in the book and the exercises. Also look at the notes provided, uh, the videos provided uh, on your canvas show. Uh, thank you so much and best wishes.